So when this gets rained on, the rain goes through here into the bottom one. And then it comes out the bottom here as compost tea. Hey, it's Greg here with MaritimeGardening.com out here getting eaten alive by the black flies. And I thought I'd show you my new <coughs> solution to my composting problem. So for years, I've not had any means to compost my kitchen scraps because I'm afraid of black bears and other animals getting into it. And uh, I've tried vermicomposting in the garage and that sort of thing. And that doesn't seem, you know, sort of functional because how much of that can you do in a garage, right? And then I thought, why don't I vermicompost in my garden? And I got this neat kind of system that I rigged up for like 20 bucks. So uh, let's have a look at this thing. Let me walk you through it. Right, so what I've got here is two storage containers. Okay, and each storage container has some holes in the top for rain to get in when it does rain. And they each have holes in the bottom as well. So when this gets rained on, the rain goes through here into the bottom one. And then it comes out the bottom here as compost tea. Right, so I've got a thing that's making compost tea on a perpetual basis whenever I uh, use my watering can. You know, especially with new seedlings, I can just dump some of that in with the water. Water the plants with it. Everything gets a little, a little boost, right? I put it on top of this uh, concrete with the idea that there'd be less likely to be the case that uh, voles, mice, and things like that chew their way into there. Um, that's not guaranteed. Uh, also hoping it'd be less likely that ants and things get in there, but you can never stop ants. They'll go where they want to go. Um, but that's the gist of it. Um, this one here, I've got some uh, just garden weeds in there. So what I do is Every once in a while, I mean, there's always weeds in a garden, right? So you grab a little bit of that and throw it in there, but there's soil attached to the weeds, right? And the soil's got all the, the organisms that break stuff down in it. And then you add the kitchen waste to it. So this one in the bottom is pretty much uh, full of kitchen waste already. Um, now it's black. It's taking up heat from the sun. Hopefully everything there should work fairly well. I chose this size container. These are about... Oh, let's say 16 inches wide by two feet wide. Um, when these are full, I can pick them up, right? So I chose that for a reason, right? So that, you know, I could turn this stuff over once in a while. So the, the my, my idea for turning these over is I take the lid off, I pick it up, I dump it into a wheelbarrow, I turn it around a little bit in the wheelbarrow, dump it back in the container, <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> that's the turning process, right? Um, so, you know, We'll see how long I can operate this until it gets full, right? Uh, and one of them gets full, I suppose I could just bury it in any one of my gardens, assuming I haven't got something, you know, in the process of growing in that garden at that point in time. But at least this way, um, I can use my, my non-meat <laughs> kitchen scraps, right? And, you know, vermicompost is supposed to have no real discernible odor, and that's what I'm doing here. So hopefully the odor is so minimal that it won't draw in raccoons, bears, <laughs> all the things that like compost, squirrels and stuff like that, right? I tried, so like initially when I uh, set the garden up, I tried composting kitchen scraps and these, these here beds, which are garden beds now, these were initially, uh, the idea was it'd be successive composting stations. Um, but any kitchen scraps I threw in here just got dug out and thrown all over the place by animals. Um, so then I was composting things like horse manure and yard waste in here, which did work. Um, but then one year I planted uh, squash in one of these and it grew so well, despite being uh, in the shade of this tree and in the shade of these trees and all this stuff. I just decided I should be growing stuff in these. <laughs> it's, it's a waste of space to not be growing stuff. So I grow things that are, you know, I find to be deer proof here squash, potatoes, garlic, onions, things like that, right? So inside the fenced garden enclosure now, I've got this set up here, which hopefully doesn't become a wasp nest or, or some god awful thing like that. I mean, we'll, only time will tell, right? But the idea is that I can put my kitchen waste in here. 
I've got the nice little compost tea where any plant, any bed where I, I think it needs a boost or a little bit of help, I can just put a, a gallon of, you know, let's say one quarter compost tea, three quarters water, and, uh, you know, basically get get a real good value out of this. And th these are relatively inexpensive storage containers. They fit in one another. Uh, just, just, you know, to me, a really low budget way. I guess I could stack them up really high if I really want, but this is all I want to deal with. Try this for a season and see how it works. So this is my solution to my composting problem. Uh, it always bothered me to be throwing away my kitchen scraps, just taking them out to the curb and letting the, the city take them away. Uh, this seems to be, I mean, we'll see how it goes, right? But by putting the non-meat things in here, keeping it all closed up, basically a vermicompost type situation. Um, and I assume there's worms in there. I mean, I'm not going to go buy red wigglers and all that sort of stuff. Uh, I just, you know, basically there's, there's kitchen waste and soil from my garden and weeds from the garden and whatever organisms are in that. In my mind, based on my understanding of how decomposition works, fungi and other uh, bacteria and things like that, it should break down just fine. <laughs> and I'm sure there's worms in there, although it may get too hot for them to live in that situation, right, with it being black and being in full sun and so on and so forth. Um, you know, it's just an experiment. We'll see how it goes. Uh, as long as stuff's breaking down, I don't care what's breaking it down. As long as something's breaking it down, I think this will work. Well, anyway, I hope you found that interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. And until next time, get out there, get at it. Have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching.